There was a song in the days. In the ignorance of the people, they would sing, That's all right. That's all right. Well, that's all right. That's all right, Israel. It is upright. Yah says it is Yasha. It is upright. It's just. It is the righteous response from a nation that he has elected his people. We do greet you all this Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom called Yitzrayam Mishmacha, scattered abroad. Throughout the Olam, the Erech, the earth, its circumference. Wherever you are, we greet you all in the magnificent name of Yoshua HaMashiach. There is no Lord God or any other deity whereby we can proclaim the power of his Ida, the testimony of power and strength, or the resurrection, tikva, the hope of a nation that he has elected by his own sovereign election, his picking. That's why we are the Bahia. We are the elect according to Almighty Yahweh's choosing, not some religious process. He eliminated all of the formalities, and so he sent forth a Torah in the excellence of the Dham of the body of Yeshua Hamashiach. And I'm glad that he destroyed all the processes that we can come boldly before the throne of Omani Yah and speak aloud with the Edu, the testimony of his power, his might, the promises of his Torah to Avraham Yudjach and Yaakob, whereby we are the zira, the seed, that which has birthed forth out of our forefathers. They are the progenerated of Yisrael. I want to say to those, because there is a component of such ignorance today among the people, and they tend to sneak into silly women, or that is a religious mind conscience, that are full of sin, and they lead them astray unto seductive doctrines and teachings of hell, whereby they cannot obey the Torah the truth and so there is a tremendous component out there that because of the way we bring forth our shaha we would interpret that as worship but it is the shaha in the shaha of yah it is the gladness of personification of the testimony of yoshua hamashiach and the power of the works that he has done so we don't hold back anything. Rejoice. And to you that are critical and criticize us here, yeah, that's all right. Can I say this? I am not disturbed by the criticism of any man. I'm getting too old. Never have been taken by that. It's not even water falling off a duck's back when it comes to me. Because I frankly don't give a damn what they say. But I want to read this. I'm going to teach somewhat, hopefully in a fashion that will be comprehended by the nation of Yisrael. This is how or why we do what we do. David declares unto us, he says, come. He used the word come. Boo, let us enter in. Let us hire. Let us come before his presence. Come. He says, let us sing. He used the word she. To sing of the excellence. Of the power of his testimony. To speak from the volume. Of the testimony of Yah. And the excellence of his power. That uh, has been operative in you, Yisra. Yes, so we sing unto who? We sing unto our Abba. We sing unto the Most High. We sing unto the Excellent One. We declare His name. <clears throat> he said, let us make, listen to what He says. He says, He used the word Shincha, a rejoicing 
that is beyond the ability to express in no other fashion but by the simplicity of Yah commanded us to operate in. He said, let us make a joyful. You tell me, he says, noise. Kara. 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 A sound that can be heard in the Shemayim. A triumphant voice unto y'all to declare the power of his testimonies. He said, let's make a joyful noise unto the Ebat, the rock of our Yahshua HaMashiach. Then we are commanded, he says, let us enter Bo, come before his presence. What does that imply? It is his poneem. It is his face. It is the expression of Yah's face. Let us come before the presence with Toda. As they were saying, thank you, thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, thank you, Yahweh. Toda, Toda, Yahweh. For the Shabbat day. Oh, Toda, Toda. Yahweh, oh, to die, Yahweh. I want to to die yeah, for the Shabbat. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not concerned with this wicked world. He says, uh, let us come before his presence with Toda, make a joyful noise uh, unto him. And he tells us how. With Tehillim, with Psalms, and singing from the chronicles of the experience that David had with Almighty Yah, the excellence of his power, the deliverance from all of his Uyid, his enemies of destruction, from the enemies of our own mind and our own conscience, from our own subtleties of wickedness. Almighty Yah, he is great. There is no other one that we can express the blessings unto. Then he tells us this. Sing unto Almighty Yah with a new song. Not a new song, but the same song. A Brit's Mela. A covenant of a heart that has been circumcised. Not like this wicked gospel mess. And so we sing a new song, a renewed song. And there's a Brit Milah in the bosom of Yisrael. Yeah, there's a song of great, there's a Shiram, a Shia, and song of his testimony. And sing unto Yah, he commands all the Ulam, because Yisrael is scattered throughout the Ulam, throughout the Iraq. Every nation, every people, every hue of skin, they have been scattered. He says, sing. Unto Omar Yahweh, then we must berach, baruch, to kneel, to bow to his name. Bless his name. And then he commands us to show forth his Yoshua, Yoshua, salvation. He did not say one day Shabbat, he says from Yam to Yam. What does the word Yam imply? Does it just simply mean the significance of the Pacific of the Shabbat this day? No, from every second, every moment, every centiral of a moment in our lives, that is the command of Almighty Yah. So if you wonder, you that are watching, while we sing and dance, it is the simplicity of the command of Almighty Yah. You see how easy that is? It's not difficult, is it? But yet you have men that take that and they wretch it, they twist it to their own destruction. And they will imply that's not what it means. I don't give a damn what the Christian whole house is doing. It makes me no difference what they are doing. I don't care what one thinks. We don't pattern ourselves after this dismal whore. We don't do what she does. We don't interact. She is a birth. She is of the lineage 
of this vile, hideous whore that is known as religion, the worship of God, has nothing to do with Catholicism. They're all the same. Whether it's Hinduism, whether it's Islam, whether it is Confucius, whether it's the Zen Buddhists, whether it is the yoga, the yogas, whether it is Christianity, they are all birthed from under the same heathen spirit that has been birthed by one spirit, Nahash, the mind of the serpent, that defies the very constraints and the mitzvah of wisdom of Almighty Yahweh. So it doesn't make any difference how one calls upon their damn God. I don't give a damn what the name of this vile thing that you call it God. It makes no difference. Don't tell me you even know what the word God means. Don't give me that trash out of Webster. Even that implies it is the worship of God or God. So we know that as Shaul says, as far as lords of Be'er, there are many. Gods are many. You got black gods. You got white gods. You got damn racist gods. You got pro-anti-gods. You got Jew gods and Greek gods. You got German gods and Irish gods. And all of their gods are damn dogs. They are phantoms of their own their own damn wickedness. And I'm not afraid to say it. Yeah. Their gods do not give a damn about anyone else. You understand? Yeah. And for us to be so juvenile gullible, uh, that we rely upon the sensationalism of our four teachings, uh, which our mothers, our fathers lie to us, Christmas and Thanksgiving and, and the damn Easter bunny. Hallelujah. We greet you all, you and your kindness, your general support for the works of Yah here in Yahshua HaMashiach. We greet you all. I'm precious up. Davis, Charles Davis there in California, Los Angeles. I talked to him on this past week and he lays down the garment. You come in here, I want you to be quiet. We're going to listen to Re'ach David Yisrael. If you want to know what our teaching and doctrine is, listen to him. If you don't agree with him, don't come back. Because you will not serve any purpose here. Do we agree with Yahshua HaMashiach? Do you agree with the Torah? Can I ask you a question? Then? Do you agree with all that Moshe did? Do you agree with all that Eob did? Do you agree with all that Kepha did? Do you agree with all that Yakahanan did and all he spoke? Do you agree with it? Do you agree with all that Yakahan as he write from Giliana, the revelation of the time? Do you agree with all of that? We are silly damn people. Because we think that we have the mastery of things. We have no honor. Well, trust no man. That's not what Yah implies. This wicked generation will trust a man to cut them open, a faggot, a bona fide lesbian butch bull dagger Jezebel. They will trust every damn corruption of peels that are so twisted that you want to kill your damn self. And yet when it comes to trusting those that Yah says, uh, if you love me, we love Yah. You believe he loves you? Then Yah says, I will give you Re'ach after my own laugh. Either he is a liar or he's telling the truth. This is a damn stupid generation. And we're wise in our own conceit. Oh, I'm smart. You're a fool. He said, I will give you Re'ach. What is the Re'ach? He brings us to the pasture of fullness. That we can dine and eat on the succulent substance of Torah. To feed our nefesh that we may grow in the excellence. And the power of that testament of Yahshua resists every power of hell. 
There is nothing that can stand against Yisra'el yeah, because only in that Eda we have the power and the Ru'ak to prevail against every kind of devious workings of hell. We are Yisra'el. Yeah. And the word Yisra'el yeah, means simply he that prevails, that overcomes. He is not subdued. Dude. So Yah says, I give you Re'ach after my own love. And they shall kala feed you, cause you to eat. As David said, feed me until I want no more. They will feed you with da'at. The ability to discern the knowledge of the wisdom of the Torah. And also be known with understanding. That's what they feed you with. And yet Yah trusts man that he is mindful. And yet this is a deceit from this whole that has been embedded into us. Uh, we think everyone is as corrupt as you are. No, they're not. And that's a fact. What a damn shame. You can't trust Yahshua HaMashiach. He was a man. Everything that Shaul said is a damn lie. You can't trust it. You cannot trust the testimony of Timotheia among the Zakhim when he spoke in a way that they were cut to the depths of their bosom. You cannot even trust what Yahushua said as he led a people in the promises of Yah. And certainly Abraham doesn't mean a damn thing for he was a man. This is how the enemy has corrupted us. And that's why we don't know a damn thing about love. Oh, I don't trust him, but you trust that wicked man that, Mr. Bossman, I, I, I need to have a, a Pesach or what days. Well, oh, you're not a Jew, are you? You got to present yourself before the most vilest of wicked people. And you're afraid to resist his command. Because he would say, you're fired. You trust your paycheck to come on time? You trust man. Well, I got knowledge. You don't have a damn thing. Everything you know has been recycled. You have no pattern. You are not the inventor of one damn thing. You may have heard it and not recall it in your subliminal, but it was there. There's nothing new under the sun. These lawyers say, Yah is talking to them. He is not my Ach Yusipiyah. He talks about the power of this testimony. You don't hear that, you will not hear one word, he says. It is amazing how he talks to them. You know where that came from, from the Christian whore. That's what T.D. Jake says. That's what Benny Head says. And they all talk in a different talk. And so these juveniles get that same spirit. Well, the Most High spoke to, to me and said that you're a damn liar. When Yah's voice speaks, the earth bow down. The seas, the Yam, the seas of the earth, uh, they quake and, sh and they tremble. The mountains move out of their place. The earth goes into a convulsion. It shakes and it reels. Uh, the only reason it's in this place by the command of the Torah. As Hanak speaks of, I was there from the beginning. He has spoken one last time. And that's by his Hamashiach. He is not speaking to Yisra'ya in this. Oh, you tell me father doesn't talk. Oh, there are fathers that don't have to say one thing. They just look. They didn't there look. They would say, I'm not saying one word, boy. I've told you once, twice, three times. I'm not telling you again. And that's it. You get some discernment to find out what they said. Can I say this and I'm going to teach? He made man... 
the Ish. He made him in his eternal image. He did not create him or make him out of some kind of architectural plan. He came out of the laba, the mind of his strength of Yahweh. And even with the Melachim of Hashem saw this thing, they marveled. They marveled. Because there was nothing like him. There's nothing like a man. When he's a man, nothing more powerful. Even the, the king of the jungle, when he sees him, he says, Ah, oh, boy, I know I got him about three, four hundred pounds. But there's something that says, don't mess with him. He made man with excellence and he brought forth a strength from his loins. That there is nothing that is comparable to her. I'm not talking about a damn loose footed Jezebel. I'm talking about an Ishore. She showers the ish with the beauty that she inhabited from the birth of his loins. She caused the capacity of his strength to be matched to the pleasure of Yah. Not some hoe shaking her ass. I will come on. Not some freezy dressed Jezebel with her ass out and her titties flopping down the, to the floor. And of course, these effeminate men that call themselves preachers, they like that. Somewhere he must have a man. He came among Israel and he looked for a man that stood in the gap. Because you're corrupt, that doesn't mean your neighbor is corrupt. Because you're wicked, you have no confidence because you're weak, doesn't mean I'm weak. Hallelujah. Again, we greet our friends and our enemies. We greet you as well. You that come to our website to extract. And you that come to annoy, we appreciate it all. For we know that all things, he uses the word call, the whole of the matter, the substance. We know that all things work as our fashion as for the tongue of Almighty Yah. So we rejoice in that, for we are called for his purpose and his honor. So we greet you all, our Ak, Davis there in Los Angeles, and those that are gathered with you, Yah's blessing that there are those that are gathering with him, and we greet our Ak, Tayonia there in Memphis. Blessings to you all, our Ak, Jackson there. We greet you, Toda, for your kindness, your gift, our Ak, Kevin. Heinz, we do barach you for your kindness and all of your gifts. My ach mikaya, mikaya la, I beat you all to the punch this morning, all right? And our ach savonia, all you that are listening, our ach David there in Indiana, may the riches of your rest upon you all, your kindness, our achot Washington there in Arkansas, may ya barach you, our ima Miriam there in Maryland, may ya strengthen you. In all of our battles, may he give us strength, Yisra'ya. May he barach you mightily and cause his fervent love to grow greatly in you. Our precious Ak Daryl, down there in Atlanta, the riches of your rest upon you, your family, and every circumstance and situation that arise. Now, I know that I have not forgotten you, but if I don't identify you, you're all in my bosom. I appreciate all that you all do and all of your kindness. And may Yah's riches rest upon you all in your sure's mighty name. I do want to say, I was saying to my Raphael <clears throat> that that song that uh, Yosipia and his Isha sing, 
that there was someone that subscribed to our YouTube channel. And then when I looked, there was someone that had taken that song. I said, how do they know that they're husband and wife? And they took that song. And it showed a panorama view of Rushilayim. And the way they contrast that together, it was one of the most beautiful things. I want to find it so you all can see that. And I said, how does that man know? So he has her and has him. And so they're interjected into this beautiful show, Rafi. It was one of the most beautiful displays of core graphics. It, it was very beautiful. I had to look at it again. And the way that the panorama view of the city of Yerushalayim and Yisrael, it was just a magnificent work that that individual did. And they longed to take the music from here and they utilized. It is not our music. We have no pattern on one damn word. And so you can't copyright nothing. It's wickedness. We sing on to the honor to the Kabuls, the excellence of his strength. You don't own a damn thing, not even the breath that he gave you uh, to sing with. So what gives you the right to say that this is mine? You cannot use it. You can take anything off our website. I tell people that all the time. I don't care whether you agree or disagree. You can alter it. You can take anything you want. It makes me no difference at all. Uh. Take it. I'm not the orchestrator of anything. Yah is. And so what credence do I give unto me as though that uh, I am the magnificent, excellent one, that I am the creator? I'm not. It is to his honor. Take what you want. You don't have to inquire of us. Take it. It's free. You don't have to buy. Freely has been given unto us. And freely you take advantage of it. And so when I see that, it is a beautiful thing. It is amazing when I see it, when I see the other act, when I see them, even for the messages for Nsukka, someone subscribed to our YouTube. And then I see this picture of Achyosipi. I say, how? Okay. I understand now. Maybe they don't like the way I instruct or administer a certain form. But undoubtedly, they were blessed with what they said. Maybe Zachin Yaramiya is a little too uh, tactful. Maybe their appeasing voices uh, attract and it draws with the simplicity of that revelation. No man can do it by himself. He's a damn fool if he thinks he can. No man can run his house by himself. He needs an issue. That's the truth. Hallelujah. I want to begin a teaching on this Shabbat. For all Yisraya, for the nation of his people. The great battle that we shall, as we have been ordained by the Most High, to show forth the excellence of His power. And the testimony of Yoshua Hamashir rises above every situation. Now, the power of that testimony, it doesn't rise above or to the occasion now. When Yah talks about his koach, his power, it is the might of his mind. What can stand against the mind of Omar Yahweh? We are commanded to allow the same laba, the mind, the substance of that mind, which is the mind of the living Torah, to be in us as it was in Yeshua, Hamashiach. And so there must be a holocaust of the nuclear fire. How shall we survive? How are we as a nation, how are we going 
to survive. We must understand Yisrael. One of the most powerful and prominent minds, if I may use that superlative, that sought to dismantle the very ordination of the construct, the manner, the way that one must walk, as Yah gave unto Adam, it was the mind of Nahash. It was the mind that bewitches, where one cannot obey the Torah. For a mind is bewitched, as my Shilish Ach Shaul says. O oh, foolish, he called them even Kulushia, who have bewitched you that you cannot obey the truth. Your mind cannot even comprehend. Because you cannot shemach, you cannot hear it to obey it. You cannot even comprehend the tenets of Torah because your mind is bewitched. And there arose one in the midst of the garden, the garden uh, whereby the zira of Yah, his seed, uh, was to multiply, progenerate. That's what you put or plant a garden for, isn't it? For fruit, for it to grow, for Yah to dine on that fruit that he would enjoy the fragrance and the beauty of Adam. Uh, and his Ishor, Hava, as they spoke of the excellence of Omariya. And there arose this spirit, this spirit that is adamant against Yan. I want to paint this mind to show us that we may understand this Holocaust. I want to define that too by its etymology and how. The wickedness of man construe words to depict, project, pronounce a certain image in one's mind. I'll get to that. But there is a mind that is developed out of the bosom of darkness. In every component of that mind, it is against all Maria. And above all, to eradicate the elect, the Bohir, those that have been chosen by the sovereign authority, uh, the judication of Almighty Yahweh. And so there's a mind that is inbred in this heathenistic spirit in the nation, the Ruim. It is a mind of Babel, it is a mind of confusion. We must understand what it desires to do. As Hashotan said to Hava, the day you defy him, the day you renounce him, you will become a God. Knowing the difference between Tav, the excellence, and the beauty of Yah, and Ra, evil, corruption. All of our ways seem right in our own eyes, don't they? Sure they do. I want to show you the construct of that mind in order to understand the holocaust of this nuclear fire. How shall we as a nation survive? Hallelujah. 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 I want to, first of all, in order for you to understand this definitive, this words, I want to read, first of all, here from, uh, hallelujah, there is a particular verse that I want. I want it, I want you to hear. I want you to turn to Yeshua, Isaiah. I want to show you the constitution, and when I use the word constitution, I'm talking about the tenets of that mind, the aspects, 
the thoughts, the concepts. Yeshua chapter 14, I want to read two verses here, verse 13 and 14. This is a mind that opposes Almighty Yah and the power of His Hamashiach. This is the mind of Hashatan. It is a mind that is steeped in Nahash, in pride. We must understand that this beast of darkness, he has one motive. And that is to denounce the authority of Yah and that he rises above the very elevation of the one that created him. So here we will find here in Yeshua the very attitude uh, of those that have that uh, spirit of Bevel. Uh, and in this vile, wicked nation we call America and throughout the nations of the earth, uh, all of them are brought under that seduction uh, of Bevel. It is the confused mind. It is a mind that is confused. Why? Because it is not a mind of Torah. Where a mind tries to operate outside uh, the parameter of the proximity uh, of the guidance of the mitzvah of Torah. It is a mind that is delusional. It is a mind that is opposed and oppositioned unto the mind of Almighty Yahweh. And so he arises among the nation of Israel and Yah speaks to the Nobi. He says, I'm going to bring my mishpat, my judgment. Upon that nation and the people. Yeshaya 14 13. He says unto the Melech, the king of Babel, and we are our own kings, are we not? Nobody tell you nothing. You have your own Melchut, your own kingdom, your own the dirty secrets and lies and your corruption. That's why a uh, whole. You cannot trust this tasneeth, this pattern that has been uh, laid upon the minds of the people by these men that know not the lats, the secrets of Yah's mystery. They tell you this how it's going to happen, don't buy it. They're children of hell. And that's a fact. And so the mind of Bevel, the mind of the ruling authority and power, no one rules you today. We rule everything about us, our time, our will, our purpose, and we don't give a damn what Yah says. For you have said, you have a shah, you have emphatically spoken out of your own strength that you have nurtured by your own wickedness. You have said in your life here, from the strength of your conscience, your being, he said, I will ascend. I will Allah. I will become superior I will elevate myself. I will become equal. I will ascend into the Shemaim, the heavens above. My mind shall not be relegated to the things or the wisdom of the earth. But I will go beyond that and supersede everyone else. So when I talk, I talk in a different realm. This is the mindset today. That everyone is so spiritual, they are not even grounded. Yeah. I will, Allah, I will be superior to all. Above all, I will be superior to all Maria. I will ascend into the heavenly realm. And he says that I will exalt my case, my throne, my place of habitation. My place of royal dignity, of my strength, I will exalt my dignity, my throne, I will exalt my authority and my power. Where? He says, above the stars, the kochab. You see, that's what Hollywood has done, have they not? The stars that are harlots and faggots and freaks 
And we relish in these damn devils of hell that twist your damn wicked mind, make you think crazy as a bed bug. I will exalt my throne above the beauty, the excellence of Yah. Can anyone explain the very substance of the stars? Man, with all of his technology, in all of his arrogance of wisdom, he cannot explain that. Makes him look like a damn fool, but the devil knows because he has seen the beauty of the chokham, the brilliancy of the light that shines, because what they reflect is the authority of Yah. When he set the sun and the moon in its place, it reflects the beauty in all the celestial bodies. For who? For man. For man. For his more dim time and season. He did it all just for you. He did it for man. That's why when the Yeshua understand the beauty of a man, she will understand the beauty of Yah. And when the man walks in the house, she brings a beauty of strength that causes his heart to be fat. He's ready to go to battle. He's a Uriah. He's a warrior. I will, man. He said, I will sit in the mount or in the high place of the Moad place or the congregation. He said, I will sit on the side of the north. I will become preeminent and my power shall be exalted. I know some of your plans and your secrets. The things that Yah has kept hidden. Even from the princes, the powers of the air, the rulers of darkness, the spiritual wickedness in high places. They don't know. They're searching out for Yisrael. Yeah. And the powers that be will kill every damn what upon the earth. Uh, but as the old folks will say, it's one tough thing. Yeah, I quaint, now I ain't going to let them do that. Do you understand? Why? Can I tell you, for there must be remnants. There must be a remnant. There must be a boche when you're sure. Come, Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this juvenile spewing of this volatile puke if I must say he declares his place here in verse 14 he said I will Allah I will become superior my thoughts are superior that's the way we think we think that our judgment is superior unto the Torah judgment we think our concepts are superior that's the truth that is Nahash that is nachas. This is that serpent mind that bewitch us. You can't obey the truth. You cannot follow and give obedience unto the Torah. We see words, but we have no cognizance of the definition, the definitive. We just read. We have been taught to read well. For this is a nation where a people that is forever learning. But we're never able to come to the knowledge of the da'at of truth of Torah. We're always learning Yisra'ah. We're never able to come. Your command, Zasallahag, is more than reading. It's a mind that ponders and meditates and grasps. It is a mind that is disturbed when it doesn't understand the, the scintilla of the perception now. Uh, we're about in that small voice of the Torah speaking to our minds. Uh, we cannot retain that. We, we, we don't know what it says. He's eager to finish his labor to get to the book, to the storehouse. To find the fresh delicacies and the food that replenish his mind. I will ascend. I will Allah. I will become superior. With great excellence of my power, I will excel above Yah. I will ascend above the heights. He uses Bama above the highest of places. And our thoughts ascends above the Bama, the height of Torah. That we relegate it to some form of physiological type of concept. 
and not the mind of Almighty God. He says, I will rise up above the heights of the clouds. And this is it. I want you to hear this now, please. Above all things, if you get nothing today, I want you to hear this. He says, and I will be lack. Of course, if we see that little four-letter word, we think we understand it's definitive. He said, I will be lack. I will doma. I will have the same characteristics. I will resemble. I will be like as unto. There will be no differentiation between you and me. That sounds like confusion, does it? Although your young being resembles you, there's definitely a differentiation. You're the man, and he is still the boy. And if he reach your age, he will still be your boy. He said, I will dumb, uh, I will be like who? He did not say he was going to be like uh, other men. It's amazing that men say, I'm like you. Well, why don't you want to be like Yeshua, Hamashiach? Yeah. Then you got a piss poor pattern if you're like me. Come on and talk to me. Yeah? You got a piss poor pattern then. It's not worth a damn. Huh? I will, man. He says, I will be like. He did not say like a melak. He did not say like Gabriel, a Micaiah. He says, I'm going to be like you. The Holocaust, the fire that burns, the Holocaust, the false simulation of darkness. To give us a picture of a concept that has nothing to do with the reality of Almighty Yahweh. Do you hear me? He said, I'm going to ascend. I'm not going to be like another man or a melech. I'm going to be dama. When they see me, they see you. When they see my power, it is just like your power. It is of the same essence. It is of the same strength. This is Nahash. There's a reason. There is a holocaust of great devastation that shall befall the nations of the earth. How shall Yisrael survive, Yisrael? How shall we overcome what shall be the strength of our overcoming these circumstances and situations? How shall we overcome? I want to, before I proceed, I, I want to, may I do this? I want to define the word holocaust. I was talking to Zachin Yaremia one day because I am a student of my own ignorance. I'm a man that every day that I'm refining the simplicity of the simple nature of the man that Yah has created in the prototype of him. He made man in his eternal image. You understand. I don't give a damn what the wicked say. Hallelujah. We must understand the definitive of words and what they imply. I want to read the word holocaust. That's why I chose that Word because it has great significance. And I'll define that as I go, Yisrael. This is not microwave stuff here. When I prepare meals for us, even in the labor of cooking physically, I don't do it in the microwave. It takes me eight, nine, ten hours to do a certain cut of a meat. You know that. So I'm not doing this in some kind of snapshot for the moment. I want to define this word, this noun that is so synonymous with just one group of people that we call Jews. And everyone respect that what in the hell is a Jew? If there is no J in the Hebraic language, 
When you cannot deduct a Jesus, then how do you deduct a Jew? It is right. So I want to define the word holocaust. It's not me. This is uh, the conception, the creation of the words uh, by the linguists. That make it appropriate for the linguistics of the people that speak the tongue. That it express the definitive uh, and a definitive is something that is settled, or the defined statement has been made. There is no other resolution to it. You can't resolve it any other way. So I want to define that and take us for a few moments through its origin of concept. And then I want to take us to the etymology and speak or read a statement from one of the most prolific, profound uh, linguists uh, of the modern era or even before our era. Can I do that? I shall do it. Hallelujah. I want to define this word, uh, first of all, holocaust. What it implies, what it means, uh, the roots of it. All right? The word holocaust... Uh, now, we began with the etymology. It is from the Middle English, which proceeded from the Old French. It is holocausti, holocausti, that had its origin in the Latin vernacular, holocastium, castium, which had its productivity or its strength from the Greek, holo kastun, holo kastun. And the word holo kastun, it is a word that is neutered, which has no specific definitive in a masculine form or a feminine form. There are words in the Hebraic language that presents a power of masculinity, and there are words that present themselves in a feminine form, all right? Hear this, Yisraya. It implies, it means, this is what the word holocaust means. It means one thing. It means one thing, my heart. I will define it. I was doing research again the other day, and I went online for the most updated dictionary. And how they have construed the meaning to hide the subtleties of darkness. Was he not the most subtle creature in the garden? Yeah. Did he change the word? Yeah. He changed meaning, didn't he? Yeah. This is what the word holocaust means. It means burnt whole. Burnt whole. From whole and kasto, it is mean to burn from ki'in to burn. And so the word has its definitive in this meaning, a burnt sacrifice. A sacrificial offering wholly consumed by fire. That's what holocaust means. A complete or thorough sacrifice. I know my zakhin doesn't like that word, but Zabach, a zabach. It is a sacrifice or destruction can only come one way, especially by fire. There's a holocaust that shall define or be defined by what even this word implies. But it is not a Greek or Middle English word or a French word. It is the true expressions of Yah's Ullah, the whole burnt offering. The whole. What is all of this nuclear power of death whereby the elements burn with a fire like no other fire? Yeah. He said, I shall be like you. I'm not going to be uh, of the secondary form. I'm going to be like you. There shall be an offering, the burnt offering, uh, uh, the sacrifice uh, 
unto Yah. His word, he is a consuming fire. His word is like fire, Yisrael. It is not some dribbling of some stagnated water. That this is what the word Holocaust men means. To understand the depths of that, I want to read from a noted scholar. Has nothing to do with the Jewish thing we call a Holocaust. Nothing at all. That was not the Allah of Almighty Yah. That was not the offering. Eh? You have to understand the offering and the burnt offering. This is what Nahash does to us, Yisrael. As our Shatan changed the element of the word. And so is man doing that today. That's why in the Hebraic language, Yah gave us 3,200 words. That's it in the entire language. And now we have this metropolitan cosmic speak today with the polluted superlatives and everyone trying to elevate their speech and their, their articulate mannerism greater than everyone else. Damn your mannerism. Yeah. Hallelujah. I will, oh man. Now this is from the Ethnology Dictionary. It implies the word holocaust. It means sacrifice by fire, burnt offering. It is from the Greek, as I stated, holocaustun, the thing which is wholly burned. It must be wholly consumed by fire. By fire. He said that I am going to exalt my throne and I'm going to be like the most high. I'm going to be like Yah. So in order for him to offer this offering unto him, Hashatanda, he must find a way for the Allah, it must be, Yisrael, to be burned whole. And holos means whole. How do you get, uh, how do you get a people that have suffered some form of great inhumane uh, atrocities? And yet those that were brought over on the slave ships by the tens of million, they died on the caravan. To the nations that are wicked. Yeah. Oh, that's forgotten, but you cannot forget. Can I impose? I had a young man to call me the other day. He was a Jew. I like the way you write. I have a plethora of knowledge. I am a student of Torah. I have studied for many generations. I know what to say, but I don't know how to depict it the way you do. I need you to write for me. I said, no, sir. If you have this knowledge and understanding, then write it in the simplest of the form of your mind, whereby those that are simple will understand what you say. Yeah. And if you have all this knowledge, well, sir, I tell you, I have pedigree. For my uncle, uh, he is... Melanson, uh, that he wrote this dissertation for the family of the Oppenheimers. Uh, and I have pedigree. I'm a fifth generation of a certain sect of Judaism. Uh, I said to him, man, you tell me that you have been given this excellent, uh, profound knowledge and truth. Uh, I said, did he grant Moshe to write what he needed to? Did he grant Shaul to write what he needed to? Did he grant Obadiah? And you tell me you have the essence of a Nobi uh, or uh, one that is mighty of God and you don't know how to put it down on paper, man? I said, I don't have the time to do it. Yeah. Well, well, I need to talk. I said, no, sir, you, you don't need to talk to me. Oh, I know what people say. Well, that's kind of rude. That's not me. You don't even know what the damn word Anna means. Don't come to me with that folly. You're silly and you don't even realize you're silly. You're wise in your own dumbness and you think you're smart. Don't come to me like that because I will break your back. I said, no, sir, I will not do it. No. I will not do that for you. You say, Yah has given you this. You're a man that of superb knowledge. He began to explain it. No. I said, I don't have that kind of pedigree, but I know truth. Yeah. Undoubtedly, you know that I have something because uh, you're impressed by that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It means this. It means, uh, it says here, originally, 
quote, a Bible word for burnt offering give a wider sense of the massacre or destruction of a number of person. This from 1833. Quote, the Holocaust Nazi genocide of European Jews in World War II first recorded in 1957. Earlier, this is the word that it is Shu'ah, Shu'ah, and I'll teach on that one word. Earlier known in the Hebrew as Shu'ah, as Shu'ah, to mean a cataclysmic, catastrophic mayhem. It says the word in itself was used in the English reference to Hitler's Jewish policies from 1942. Listen to this. This is by Robert J. Lifton, the Nazi doctor. He says, but not as a proper name for them. In essence, the word Holocaust has no relationship to the deaths of those. It doesn't imply the Shu'ah, the offering that is burnt whole. I will show you that, sir. Has no reference to that at all, Yisra'ah. None whatsoever. And so this is the massaging of the minds of individuals. And, they, and we all think we know, don't we, and so a man that has a scholarship in an area, when he labors to understand when you're sleeping, he's laboring to understand that our arrogance, as Bevel says, I'm above your knowledge. My knowledge is superior. And you don't even know, man. You need to be quiet, woman. Shut your mouth and let someone teach you something. Oh, babies are like that, are they not? They know better than the parents, do they not? The parents have experienced the birth, the pain, but that little six-year-old knows as much as you know. She can tell you the best procurement of that matter, the process, see which one is better, which one is more applicable. I can show you how to add up two numbers. How about that? Has no direct correlation between either one of them. There shall be a nuclear holocaust. How shall Yisra'ah survive? How do we understand this Yisra'ah? I want to give you an understanding of this burnt offering or the one that comes to supply and to make sure that the offering is right. You must begin here in the book of Matthew, Matthews. Hallelujah. Here is the whole burnt offering and the purpose of the whole of the burnt offerings. The whole is the core, the complete. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 12. Yachahan speaks of this one that shall come after him. Matthew 3 and 12. He tells us that his winter blow or his fan is in his yard, in his hand. And he will thoroughly, uh, he will thoroughly purge. Uh, he will be the kafa, the cleanser, the one that extracts to remove all offense unto Yah, the leaven, the sin nature. He has the fan, he has the ruach of Yah. He has the breath of the ruach, the spirit of Yah, that blows uh, like a wind that causes life uh, to come forth. Uh, he has the Ruach of Yah in his right hand, in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge uh, his floor. Listen to this now. He's going to cleanse his house. And he will gather the wheat. He shall gather Yisra'ah. Let the wheat and the tear grow together. In that day he shall send forth the Melachim, the reapers of Yah, and they will purge. They will separate Yisra'ah. They will be the one that will saraf. They're going to put the fire to the tear. 
We shall be cast into the eternal hells of Almighty Yah. He shall thoroughly purge. And he shall gather in the wheat into the storehouse. This is the essence. But he shall burn up the chaff. And he tells us about an ish. It is the light of Yaz Ibra, his uncontrollable anger without control. It is his Av. It is the mighty nature of his Hamas. He's going to destroy. And he shall do that with the fire that is unquenchable. He cannot be brought to any kind of control. It cannot be subdued. It cannot be managed by the spirit of this age, which is represented in the words Mayam or water. It cannot be controlled by that nature, Yisrael. It's not going to be brought under control by any means of man at all. How does, how can, how do we, how does one, an individual survive under the very authority of this massive blow of Almighty Yah. Now you think that Hashotan doesn't know that? You think that he has not prepared himself for that? It shall be an unquenchable fire. I want you to understand this, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he said that I will, Dama, I will be just like the Most High. Here is one that comes. Uh, what is this that came? Uh, it is the Torah of Yah. It is the living power yeah. of Isra. Yeah. It is a fire that purges. It's going to take the nuclear. It's, it's amazing how that word. I, I've tried to find uh, that prefix new, but I can't find any definitive to it. The only thing I can find that the word new, it is a representation uh, of a Chinese people or a tribe. How do you get that? But I understand the suffix clear, C-L-E-A-R. It is to devastate, to remove all things. It is to remove everything out of his way. When you clear out something, you take everything out of the way. The conscious of man, how they create and develop things that are so far. It is not the Shua of Omar, yeah. It is not the Allah, the Allah of Yah Yisra'ya. It is not the offering that is whole, uh, that is presented unto Yah. And it's one thing that the whole bird offering did. Uh, it took away the sins of a nation. Uh, what nation? Uh, Israel. That's why the red heifer was burned and her ashes were retrieved uh, to sprinkle. And the Kohan knew exactly what to do, Israel. And it's going to be a burnt offering. It's going to be whole too. I'm glad we are complete and made whole in Yeshua. I'm glad of that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, I'm going to be Dhamma. I'm going to be Dhamma. I'm going to be like you. I'm going to resemble. I'm going to be in the same image and the same strength. And my words, my... I don't like to use the word more faith when I talk about the devil. I like to use the Greek word, Simeon. Simeon, the miracles... Uh, that deceive the minds of the people. I don't mind using Greek for that. But not when it comes to, come to the things that are set apart. That are chadosh unto Yah. So Yah says, here's my word. It shall come. He shall have the breath of life of the Ruach in him. He shall have this in his right hand. Because Yoshua is the right hand of Omar Yah. He is his Yah. You understand Yisra'ah? Yeah? He is the Yah of Yah. The hand, the hand of his strength. He says, and when he comes, he's going to purge his house. With the fire that is unquenchable, he's going to burn the chaff. Everything that is, uh, that is spotted, everything that is a blemish is going to die, Yisra'ah. Yeah. They can tell you all they want to, that you get your iodine pills and all that. If it's a nuclear explosion, you, 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 can, uh, you can reconstitute your body. That's a damn line. You can dig into the burrows of the ground. You're not going to hide. I show us something. Now I want to take my time. You all just say help him, yeah. That's difficult for me to do. Hallelujah. But I want you to understand. 
I want my friends, I want the house. He told us to love our, our friend as we love ourselves. And if I love us at all, I will labor. I don't care what my body feels like. I will, I will, I was up, I went to bed last night, I got up. I don't know if she knew I got up. Okay. My mind just, I couldn't sleep because I had to go look in this book. Just got up. Might had to meditate a while. Couldn't even get sleepy because I was so excited about truth. Hallelujah. And still couldn't go to sleep when I laid down. Was able to keep the fire going though. Hallelujah. When I go to sleep, I don't even wake up until the, I, I don't wake up. But I lay down. I wake up at that time. If I say I'm going to get up at 5, I wake up at 5 and I get up. I don't need no alarm clock or nothing. I just wake up. I get up. Can I proceed, Yisrael? So he declares that he's going to be like Yah. So Yah says, out of the midst of this Nachash, this Bavel, confused mind, there shall be one that arise. He is the author of Nachash. And out of that spirit shall rise this anti hamashiyah this mind that is adamantly against Yah. There must be the burnt whole offering. You cannot bring half of the red heifer. You have to bring it whole. You cannot b bring uh, half of the he goat. Uh, you have to bring the whole. Now, Zachin has taught us on this. I know we forget now. We don't forget folly. It had to be the whole, the cold, the substance of all. Yah gave us all. Everything that he is was in Yeshua. Hamashiach Yisrael, everything. And he was tried by the fires of hell. That's what this mind of this uh, Goim, this heathen Gentile mind, they are massing their powers uh, to say to you, I'm going to bring you down. We're going to find your Zerah and damn it, we're going to kill every last one. We're going to kill your babies. We're going to try to find them in the wombs. We're going to abort them. We're going to kill your babies. We're going to feed them in ways. They're going to die young. Their little bodies are going to rot. Their minds will have no healthy tenets to it. We don't understand that because we have become so engaged with this damn wicked world. We think the world loves us. The world loves its own. It is not the Ahab of Yah. It is this emotional, physical, pseudo, fisher type love uh, of association and damage they will kill each other too. Yeah. Yeah. Mother said, I love my babies. And you kill all of them, you damn uh, Jezebel. Yeah. Man says he loves his mother. That boy in New York, he and his friend cut his mama's head off. And he went up on that MySpace YouTube and said, look at this. What a damn fool. Yeah. He put pictures up. Damn the MySpace and all of that. You should not even be on that damn mess. Facebook. He cut his mother's head off. Him and his friend. But he was a nice boy and he loved his mama. His mama loved him. Daddy loved him. And kill his babies? And rape your babies? Take sexual export? You bastard, kill him. Cut his head off. If we had Sadiq judgment, we would do that. Cut his damn head off. Kill him. We need righteous men. And you tell me you love them? Go to hell, you bastard. Hallelujah. Hear this. This is this Nachash mind that says, uh, I'm going to blow you to hell. I'm going to find all of them. The enemy knows that is not the fire going to purge. Can I read that again? I'll read that. It says that he has uh, in his hand in Matitya 3.12, whose fur is in his hands, uh, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. He's going to gather the wheats. Are we not the wheat mixed with the tear? He's going to gather us in the storehouse. What is the storehouse for? For y'all to have meat. 
that he can rejoice and delight in the fellowship. Hallelujah. And he shall burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And the enemy knows that those that do not fear Yah have not the ruachim of Yah, that they are as chaff. And he will set this whole damn thing on fire that he may say, that's true Yisrael. There. Now let's find a way to kill him. And even after 1,000 or a millennium bound by the power of Yah, he shall rise up against the throne and the power of his Hamashiach, the word of his strength, the word of his might. Sure he shall. T.D. Jakes is not going to teach it this way. Benihin, these bastards. The Roman whorehouse, uh, the Jewish whorehouse, the Greek, they're not going to do this. They're going to read their psalms and they're going to sing and they're going to do all their homily just like the Catholic whorehouse. Uh, and you leave there as dead and empty as you went into that dirty whorehouse. No life, nothing. Ritualism, traditions that make void the Torah of Yah. He knows that there must be a purging. And in order... For the chaff, the chaff, to be extricated, there must be a fire. And in the midst of that fire, there shall be only one thing left. That is the cream of the crop. That is the bohir, the ramir of Yisrael. And that's a fact. May I proceed, my Zakim? Okay, let me proceed then. Here in the book of Gilgana, Revelation. The rise of this nachash, this, uh, not only in this physical being of Amanda, but we don't understand. I, I, although this is Amanda, we are you. I am a man. You understand? You, a woman, is a man, a woman. And so this has more to do than just uh, a man rising up. It is the man. It is the hidden man of one's own heart. That is anti-Hamashiach that defies Almighty Yah. And out of that it gives credence uh, unto this one that has supreme power, supreme knowledge uh, of the ability to subdue them uh, and to bring them unto this delusion of hell. Uh, for one purpose, Yah says, so I can damn every last one of them. I'm going to kill them. So we need to make sure we know the man of our own heart. It is the hidden mind of one's heart that brings them into deception. So out of the midst of this mayhem, that is what Bavel is. That is what her kingdom construct is. It is a construct of a religious activity or religious activities and her mercantile of wealth and riches. That's why Mr. T.D. Jake says to everybody, how do you, what is that he says? How that fat hog got of hell, he says something. Ah, uh, woman, you are loose. Act like a Jezebel. And it robs the simplicity of the beauty of the woman and take them from the place that Yah commands them to submit to their husband, to serve them as they will serve Almighty Yahweh. And that's a fact. You shut your damn mouth if it's not so long to live with a man, then you go your damn way. If I'd have been a boy hearing you like this, I'd have said, Preacher, I like you. I'm telling you. It says this in Revelation. I'm going to get down with this today. It has much to this. It says in Revelation, Gilianat 13, 11, this anti Hamashiach, this beast that rises up looking like the lamb with two horns that represents a system not only an economic and a religious system. Everyone got their own religion. Everyone got their own God. Isn't that so? When, when Hava was seduced by the powers of hell, we can see the zero that came forth out of, of, of Adam, Cain, and Abel. And one brought forth death. And that seed is alive today. When our minds are seduced by the sin, the defiance of the Torah, we live in death, Yisrael. So it's more than just an economic power, a religious power, that tends to this, uh, that can never be taught uh, in the concepts of these wicked lies uh, from this religious whore that says that they have the secrets of Yah. And the men that they purport and elevate uh, 
to the standards that they are above. Yeah, they can change the Torah. They can say you don't have to keep the Shabbat. The Shabbat means Sunday. These are dogs. C.D. Jake say that. Billy Hinn say that. Eddie Long says that. that. That dog out there in California, Crystal Cathedral, that faggot dog that, that was a faggot. Everybody knew it and they still send him on the TBN. And the faggot Jim Bacon, all of them devils, thieves, and damn liars. And you hypocrites won't even send a nickel to help this you watch it and don't send a damn dime. You extortioner of hell. I don't repent of that. It's time out that we play with this wicked generation. Always trying to appease. That's our problem. We always want them to like us. Did they love Yoshua? He did great works. Everybody loved him. Your damn works doesn't mean a damn thing. There's a man that listened to me. He tells me how he pays his employees. He listens now. Will not send one damn dime. And I say, I want to tell you something. I pay my employees more than everyone, and they don't give a damn about him. You haven't convinced them anything about your yah because you don't know yah, man. He's a damn liar. Now call me, my friend. You know who you are. I won't even dignify you by announcing your name. I like this man. I do. I really like him. If I don't like me and love me, how can I love you? To love your neighbor as you love yourself? All right. Revelation 13, 11. Yohan said in the midst of all of this chaos and, and the great manifestation of Yah's power, he says, I saw another beast. I saw this Tanim, this powerful entity of Nahash. I saw this spirit coming up out of the earth, out of the Olam. Arzachi reminded us on his last teaching about the vessels and the porous vessels. A am I correct to say that the clay vessels, uh, are they made, is clay earth or is it, uh, is that earth? You sure? Okay, thank you. So there are clay vessels then. And that means they're earthen vessels. You sure? All right, that's okay, okay. I want you to challenge me, make sure I'm right now. Hmm? I saw this rise up out of the, the vessels. The volume of the people. I saw this spirit, this nahash, that says to Yah, I don't give a damn what you do, I will not repent. My constitution is unto my God. Well, it doesn't say that, you it says that. Hallelujah. I saw him rise up out of the earth having two horns like a lamb. We got our own self righteousness. We got our own desire, our own passions, our own half faiths will please us. Uh, and we got that which we have constituted. Um, and above all, we got our own self-righteousness. And when one speaks to you about the things of God, you will see that horn rise up like the damn devil's horns. I will, my friend. That one horn of me, myself, and you don't give a damn about nothing that is of God. I saw the two horns rise up this powerful kingdom construct uh, and you got your own kingdom construct, your will, uh, your adamant passion uh, and you got your religion. Uh, I don't want to wear my religion on my shirt sleeve now. Uh, don't make me put my religion down now. Uh, I put my religion down. I do something, do you? Now you put it down and you're going down with your religion. I'm going to stomp your head in uh, like your shoe bruised the head of the serpent. I'm going to stomp your damn rush in. How about that? Yeah. I put my religion down. I don't put truth down. Yeah. Nobody. Now folks try to teach this, and they've read every book by the Lahays and all that, make them confused. And so they try to teach it as a little story. They may take one verse out of this book. They don't know it. You cannot understand this. Till you understand the beginning, the Bereshit. Once you understand the Bereshit, you can understand the Akhrith. 
the end time, the last day, the latter end of the time. No other way. Hallelujah. And he spoke as the Tanim, as the one of Nahash, the master of Nahash. Who, who speaks like you? Well, I just speak my mouth. Who speaks like you? Nobody. Talk to me. Nobody talks to you like you talk to you. Because when someone does, you rise up. When y'all talks to you the way you talk to you, you get upset with it. That's the way we are. There's a purpose in this, Yisrael. Yeah, we must understand. There's a holocaust uh, of the whole offering. Uh, it shall be consumed by fire. It shall be. We can continue to placate ourselves in our false delusion. Uh, in hell, you're going to lift up your eyes. And that doesn't make you fear, Yah. It doesn't cause trepidation. It doesn't make you serve, Yah. Believe me, Yah. It's not going to make you turn and repent. Yah brought down a house that was so damn wicked. Uh, he killed them in the wilderness with the serpents. Uh, he caused death. He caused the earth to open up. Uh, Korah, his babies, uh, his calf all went down to hell. Uh, and they ran to cover their damn sins. Yeah. We're arrogant. Yeah. We have no regard for anyone. Well, Yah has to respect you. A damn liar. Yeah. He had respect unto Aban. The Torah talks about men he had respect unto. He had respect. He honored him. He didn't respect Kayan. Because his heart wasn't right. Do you respect a friend? Sure you do. I do. You're my friend. I'll tell you the truth. I may reprove you. Did he respect Moshe? Hell, Moshe said, if you kill him, kill him all. Kill me too. Damn it. I ain't doing nothing. He said, I like you, boy. I like you. He spoke to him face to face. Paul named upon me as the Reach. Was he a friend? He was either his friend or the book is a lie. He was his friend. And y'all love Moshe like he loved him. He is, is he love? Is y'all love? So that's the way he loved Moshe. That's the way he loved Moshe. Abraham said, if, if there be 50, he said, I'll tell you, where you find 10? For you, my friend. The wicked sing, what quote, can I sing it this way? Well, a friend we have in Jesus. That's what they sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, and this one that shall come, we know the nature of the serpent, the beast. We see that from the better sheet. So we follow, follow his, uh, his, his protocol, his activities. We will know the strength and the power that is formidable. He was the covering. He was the cherubim of the covering of the kese of Yah. He emanated the very excellent and the splendor of the light of Yah's beauty. But he did not abide in truth, in Torah. He tried to go outside the parameter of Yah. It says in this one, he exercised all the koach of the great authority of the af or the first beast before him. And because the, and he caused the earth and them to dwell in to worship uh, the first beast, to worship uh, the kingdom power. Well, what are we worshiping today? Was it not that Hashatan gave constitution unto one thing when he told Hava, defy him? He gave strength unto one element, the flesh. And there's nothing more valuable to us than our putrefied, vile, funky flesh. We love our own funky, funky ways more than we love anything. We love our damn funky, funky mind. We love our funky, funky ways. That's old school there. You know that. That's throwback, Zarkin. That's back in the days there. That ain't new school there. That's old school. That's in our days. We love this funkiness about ourselves. It's the mila, it's unclean. All of our ways are pure in our own sight. And that's why we're so full of death. That's why we're so full of maveth. We die prematurely. There's no liveliness for you. Hell, after this, we, we don't think about him. It is the truth, and nothing but the truth. 
He calls them that dwell upon the earth to worship the first beast. What is the first beast nature of man? To rise up against Yah. We see that with Cain and Abel. That he rose up against his brother and he killed him. We never rise up against our brother to kill them and to kill our hoat. We don't do that. That's the nature of that beast whose deadly wound was healed, that there was a rafa of restoration. And so we heal our own venomous deadly wounds as we wound, and we know we have destroyed. And we heal that with our own sins and our own wickedness and our funky, funky, wicked ways. What has that to do with the Holocaust? Well, you don't understand Holocaust unless you understand the conception of it uh, and the whole thing and what those that call themselves Jews that Mr. Hitler said, what you're doing, I'm not going to let you do it. You're ravishing our country. You're robbing. You're stealing. You're taking advantage. And I'm not going to let you allow you to do that. Isn't his story the history of all events? Don't you see that it's expunged in Texas? They're taking out all types of references to what we call slavery. Now, what a wickedness. What a wickedness. Do you all understand what the Voting Rights Act is, 64, what it was for? That there were southern states and states whereby the people, they had poll taxes, where you had to pay taxes, you had to pass a literary, uh, a literary test, whereby people could not read, where they, that, that, was, that was imposed upon a people. And so the southern states, in order for them, they had to have a renewed, the federal government took over the voting rights of states like South Carolina, North Carolina, all these southern states, because they did not allow the subjects the right that, that although all men are created with the most indelible right, who is that for? A damn law of a constitution. We have one constitution, it's Torah. Damn America's constitution. Damn it! And so every 10 years, there's a revisit, a revisit of the constitutional rights, uh, or mean the constitution of the voting rights acts, uh, and the states say, well, we don't have to do that. We don't want to do that. And so that's what we're seeing taking place in the Supreme Court today. You understand uh, that they may dismantle it, uh, and so the states say, you have to have a, 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 liter, a, a, a literacy test. Uh, you have to pass this kind of test. You have to do this. Uh, you got to have that in order to vote. Damn your voting. Yeah. Damn you dogs. I wouldn't vote for one of you. Damn all of you, Mr. Obama, all of you. I've been voted for, and you're sure. He has voted for me and sealed my name in the book. So the womb was healed. So the deadly womb of the head was healed. I'm glad that, the, that, that even you're sure when they wounded him, even when they, when they took the spear in his side and blood and the water, the cleansing of the power, the redemption of the dam of Yahshua and the water that washes away the sins of Yisrael. And although they bruised him, no broken bones, and they did not destroy the Rushwa because Yah is the head of Yahshua HaMashiach and Yahshua the head of on. They didn't destroy it. It says this BC does great wonders. Oh, who does any greater wonders than Benny Hinn and T.D. Jakes? And they pray for the sick and yet they go to the doctor and get cut open, all of them. Yes, they do. Well, you know this. Yeah, I know that. They're healing everybody that got internal things. They purported the damn liar that was raised up by Hashatan, or Robinson, all of them. That's what they did. No organic healing from these damn devils. Nam, 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 Yisrael. You got something, okay, you get it. Well, this woman, she had bursitis. I'll stop it. It's a nice warm day. She felt better. The warmthness of the room had made a walk. Oh, I can walk. He healed those of palsy and leprosy. Or well, raised one from the dead, know that big hog of a man, he fell out, uh, lost his breath because he had been eating chitlins last night. And pig feet. High blood pressure. Lost his breath. He came alive. Ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! These are liars. You see why they don't like me. That's all right. I don't have no problem with that. And he does great, uh, see me on great miracles of great power. What he does so that he makes fire. He says, I'm going to be like an Elijah. I'm going to cause fire. He makes fire. 
Did the fire make them believe? One said, I know that this is a message. When he took them last 50, he said, no, I bowed down. Please, don't, don't, don't do that. That's what he said. Oh, the king wants you. He said, he does. All right, here it is. The consuming fire of y'all. The command at the messenger's mouth. Hallelujah. So he make fire come down from Hashemah in the sight on the earth and the sight of men. And deceives. Now he uses the spirit of Shekhar. Them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. Which he had power to do in the sight of this vile kingdom power. And that's what Benny Hinn and all of them do. They're not of Yah Yisrael. The Christian church is not the very uh, incubator of Yisrael. It has been a deception and a tool to lure and to draw and to captivate and to bring them onto the beast system of the beast mind. And when you leave there, you know everything there is to know. Nobody can tell you nothing. I will let nobody tell me nothing. I know the book like you. I was born in there. I know the book. I read the book every night. That's the way they talk. They have no regard for the true ordination of Yah. Yahshua before he ascended and he descended, did he not? And he gave his Gemuel gifts unto men. He did not give it unto a woman, he gave it unto a man. He called some Shalisham, the mighty messengers of the power of Yah's truth. That bears the head of the sword of the power of Yah's word. And he gave the strength unto the Navi and the Nobis and the prophets. And those that declare the Bezurach of Yah. And he gave us also, he gave us the brilliancy and the excellence of the more or the reach and the excellence of the more the teachers of your he gave it unto men did he not give us a gift then we must have men with those gifts if we don't he's a fraudulent superficial deception unto all mankind and I don't bow down and take it back He can snuff you out. Well, if he, he's going to take me out one day. And if he takes me out, I know his pleasure. Precious in the sight is I am. Of Yah is the death of his Kedoshim. So I have no problem with that. He knows that I'm needed around for a little bit. My days are now just like yours. So it's I don't have no problem with that. I'm gone. I don't sit around and ponder that. Who that? No. Death knows nothing. I'll teach you on that one day, all right? What do you all teach that? Can I proceed a little further? By the miracles in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell upon the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had, was wounded by the sword and did live. I wanted to bring that into focus to show us the deception of this kingdom, this beastly kingdom. This kingdom of uh, Tanim. This behold. Bohemoth, this nature that rises up against Yah. And then the words of our mouth, they become like a fire, become so destructive in what we say. But this is not only a spiritual manifestation, but it's a physical manifestation as well. So he has caused the nations of the earth to, to rail against Yah, his truth, uh, and to become formidable and to build their supplies of death. There was something I wanted to read, but I'm not going to read it today. I want to just show you this. This is a picture. I, I wanted to, I'll do it next week to give us some understanding on the nuclear warfare or the nucle nuclear weaponry, its devastation of man. This is a map of the world right here. You all see that. You may not can see it quite visibly. We see the countries in red, Russia. Uh, I mean, in black, Russia, Pakistan, India, Israel. We see the United Kingdom, France, and all of these other countries in black. And the ones in red are the countries that are under the umbrella. But you see those countries? These are the countries. Listen, I will give us more information. One trident submarine. One. And they have the capacity, just one. If that group of individuals that blew up the World Trade Center. If they had a, had a 100 pound megaton nuclear bomb, they would have destroyed Manhattan, they would have destroyed Brooklyn, and they would have destroyed New York. And that's not a large bomb. 
But these are the countries. This is the mind of Babel. Say, we're going to bring you down. Isn't these the countries? Isn't this where every kind of corruption come from? Isn't these, are not these two countries known as the superpower and yet the, the powers of strength, that their power, you understand what the word super or koacha, it is above all. It is above all power. And these powers are above all the other nations. And I will show you right there in Russia, in, in Russia alone, uh, they have 11,000 nuclear. These are the number of nuclear bombs that, uh, that they can destroy the earth. This is what it's all about. Russia has enough nuclear bombs uh, to destroy the earth 28 times over. That's insane, isn't it? That's a damn demented mind. The United States of America has 8,500 uh, nuclear powerful warheads uh, that are over a hundred megatons, a thousand megatons. Yeah. One hundred thousand megaton bombs. One here, it would devastate this state. Yes, it Bring it down to the ruins of darkness. Uh, and when they do that, they destroy commerce and everything. How in the hell are you going to eat? How are you going to eat? Uh, it pollutes the water, the land. It rains down the very nuclear rain that brings death and diseases upon people. You, you, you listen to these damn bastards. Take you to buy some food and put it in the ground. And then you got countries like Britain and France, whereby they own just those countries, Britain and the United Kingdom, about a thousand nuclear bombs. And whereby they say the land of Israel, they only have about a hundred, but they, they don't know. These are the bombs of great power. And even those countries, Britain, the United Kingdom, France, and those countries like Pakistan and India and China, they all have nuclear weapons. Well, all of them the collectively together, they could destroy the earth over about three times. So you see the mindset of this demented spirit of Nahasha? It says, I'm going to bring fire, and damn it, I'm going to burn everything. I'm going to make an offering whole unto you. We're going to destroy the whole house of Israel. They're not looking for a, a run that they want to destroy the whole house of Israel. We want to make sure that there is a Shoah, an Olah, an offering that is whole. And that is the Holocaust, not what happened in Nazi Germany. That was not the Holocaust. That was not the offering that was made by Fire. And Yah has collectively given the power. The heart of the king is in the hand of Yah. As Yah turns the rivers of water, so he turns the heart of the king. He has raised them up for one purpose. That the father of his Torah, he has an offering unto himself. His word is going to stand. It's going to stand. And these are the nations that have this power to destroy the world. And to cause fire, and they're going to use it too. They're going to use it against the uh, They think they're going to win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you imagine one 100 or 100,000 megaton bomb dropping in New York? We don't understand what that is. You, you know what? Countries like Britain and France, Britain, they can only feed half of their people, not even half, about a, about a third of their people were off the farm. It's a small country. They don't even have enough, so that's why they're, they're buying and stealing uh, thousands and millions, hundreds of millions of hectare acres uh, in Africa. And you notice that how Mr. Obama, how he's trying to bring havoc upon that nation, whereby anything can grow. You can put hog dung there, it'll grow. Uh, whatever is in it, it'll grow in that land. Uh, to rob, to oppress a people. And these damn fools say that only Yisrael is in the, in the Americas, they're scattered abroad. They're in every country. And they're robbing and they're stealing. And because the governments of that country will not capitulate to these damn faggots. Uh, and say it's all right to have a faggot. Uh, and men lying with men. It's an abomination unto you. Yeah. Yeah. It's an abomination for a woman to love a woman like she would love a man. Yeah. That is not of Yah Yisrael. Yeah. You're not going to hear T.D. Jakes talk about that or Benny Hinn. Uh, and the folks will send them hundreds of millions of dollars. And yet this, there's a group that listen to me. We're not even send a damn nickel. You're not going to hear this. No, I'm not going to try to clean up my vernacular. I'm going to talk this way. Just talk to us like a loving husband and we still don't hear. I'm going to cry loud and spare not. I'm going to show you your wickedness and our sins. It's not the world. It's us. 
Don't let no one tell you the anti-Hamashi is come. Oh, the anti-Christ may come from the world, but the anti-spirit, it is in Yisrael. Yeah. Everything that was against Yah, were they the people that knew Yah? Were they the people elected of Yah? Were they the people that saw the miracles of Yah? And everything that was against him, did it come from them or from the Philistines? It came from them. Everything anti came from them. Uh, that is the task, need the prototype, that is the pattern. Uh, and everything come from Yisraya. He shall rise up from among us. Uh, and that spirit of anti Hamashiach is among us today. So he says, I will bring fire down. My words is of great power. And what I speak because I am going to be Dama, I'm going to be like you. I will rise up above your order, above your laws. I will rise up above uh, the nuclear physics uh, or the elements of the... I will look, look, yeah, you say that you're great, uh, but I tell you what, I will set even the molecules of the air on fire. That is what the fusion of nuclear bombs will do. Uh, it sets the air on fire. It's a wave of liquid fire that comes. It pollutes everything. It destroys everything. It is path. It is wicked. And what mine feel as though that it needs that kind. They are cowards. Step it up. And assert me like a man. You come with your sword and all of your armor. I come in the name of you. I shall bring you down, you damn dog of hell. And the fowls shall eat your body. We are a pack of cowards. We don't trust you. You trust your little damn pop pistol fool. I have no confidence in no pistol. I have confidence in the sword of the Ruach. How about that? You got your 45 million to go and then it jams up on you. You in trouble. You in trouble. And that take not a one that won't jam on you. Not a one. Not a one. The M14 in Vietnam, they were jamming up on them. So they, when I went in there, they gave us M16s. And they still jam. There's a holocaust. And only Yisrael shall escape. Only Yisrael. Yisrael, can I inform us, there's the burnt offering of the whole offering was vital to Yah. But there is something that is greater than the burnt offering. If I read it to you, will you believe me? Yeah. All right, I'll read it. It's in the book of Machas Ruchas, Mark. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know it. I'm not going to do you like Zachin Yaramia. He put us all on the spot, doesn't he? Keep doing it, Zachin. Hallelujah. He makes you see what you have, little or nothing. You're scared to answer. You don't want to know how to say oh man to that one, hallelujah, because you may have it wrong. He's like, no, no, no. This is your strength right here. I'm going to intermingle our overcoming and the hellish nature of this holocaust. It says in the book of Marcus, Mark chapter 12, 33. This is the command to us, to Ahava, to love Yah with all your love, your mind, your substance, your life. He says, and with all your bina, as you come to knowledge, Mark 12, 33, to Torah. He says, and with all your nechesh, all your life, everything that is of life, substance, love, yah. He says, and with all your, chlach, all your might and all your strength, everything, let it, be, let, let it be refortified by your love for yah. He said, and with all of your strength, he says, and to love your re'ach, to ahab, as you love you, it is more. It is more. It is mi'uts, abundantly, exceedingly. It is more than what? Than all cool, whole, burnt offerings on Zebach. There must be a burnt offering. It must be a holocaust. It must be. And there is something that is greater than that. You are said to love him, to love your neighbor. It is greater 
It is God's whole. It is of much greater power and significant than all the whole of the burnt offerings that have been offered. You see the simplicity of our survival? And damn it, we will act like some morons out of hell. He give us something that is so simple and so truthful. And we try to examine that, to dissect it. To no, just do what is said. Yeah. He is precise. He doesn't need your interpretation. He doesn't need you to expand on that because you cannot get the concept of that from the beginning. Hallelujah. It's greater than all. Hallelujah. Does it say that? Yeah. It's greater he said that this is more than when it is me or it is much in abundance exceedingly uh, of substantial substance of great magnitude. That's what the word implies. Then all the whole, the fullness of the riches of compliance and the actions and the activities that are associated with it and the order in which it is carried out and the sprinkling and the washing. It's greater than all, the whole burnt offering. I'm glad I defined the word holocaust because that's what it implies, the whole of the burnt offering. And Hoshotan says, I'm going to cause the fire. I'm going to get them all. If I have to kill every last one here, I will get them all. And that's what he's trying to do. He's killing them all. It's in the hand of Yah. He's put it there. We have what they call the Arabic spring. Well, a spring brings forth living substance, does it? It brings, that's what a spring is. That's what an artesian well is. That's what the aquafresh is. Uh, when you drill down, when you get to the depths of it, you hit the floor that uh, the water is sweet. But it hasn't been tainted. It is a sweet water. It is the fresh water. It is a lively water. It has, hasn't been tainted with chemicals and things. Uh, because uh, uh, the, the chemicals, uh, uh, the earth crust, uh, they have not been penetrated through all the bedrock uh, of all of the granite and all that. And you find this river that flows, uh, just like Yorkshire is the living river. Out of our bellicious flow, uh, the living waters of Almighty, uh, this living power of Torah. And so all of a sudden we find all this Arabic spring, don't we? And it was not, it was an Arabic nida, the bloody death of their sins uh, and their wickedness and all of their killing uh, and their pillaging uh, and destroying the same thing that Christianity, it has gone throughout the world and cut off heads uh, and commanded no different than Islam uh, and made them. Uh, I give you bread if you declare my damn Jesus. Uh, a dirty damn religion. Yeah. This is the nature of the beast. Uh, she manifests herself in religion, your damn personal religion. That's why everybody's religion is personal to them. They defend it. It's my way or hell's way. Your way is wrong, fool. Anytime it's your way is wrong. He has caused us to walk in derecha or the way. Yeah, we walk in derecha, imat, and the way of truth. That's how we walk in Torah. So if it's not the Torah way, it's the damn deception of hell. Hallelujah. It's a lie. It's a delusion of darkness. Hallelujah. 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 I, I want to give us one today. I'm just going to have time for this, but I'm going to continue on this teaching. Oh, my, all oh, this. I didn't realize I had so much. And this is not even a third of it. I, I just picked out a few verses to share with us today. I'm a madman when it comes to studying. I believe what Shaul says to Lahak, to study. I'm a madman. I'm mad. I get out there and work five, six hours straight hard. And I go sit down and study an hour or so. Yeah, but I got to get back to work. Yeah, I got to get back to work. So I want my physical expression of my labor for y'all to be expressed in everything I do. That's right. So I believe in working hard. I don't want no man to outwork me. You challenge him? No, I challenge me. I don't have to worry about challenging you. I challenge me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to give us an understanding of the most horrific nuclear destruction that Hiroshima, Hiroshima, Nakastaki has no semi-balance of what shall be. Even in Gomorrah, Sodom has no 
no comparison to this nuclear fission that shall come out of the heavens. I want to show you. That's why Hashatan is trying to pollute everything. Not only is he trying to pollute the soil of the land and everything. He has polluted the process of economy. And economy is, uh, it, is the, it is the engine for the people. The three basics they should be able to eat, sleep, and have a sheltering place. Yah promised us food and raiment there would be contented. This is not the system. It is a machine that robs you of love for your babies, love for each other, a despite for each other because everybody's trying to get ahead of each other. Getting ahead of what? I want you to give us a picture in the book of Eyo. I'm sorry, in the book of Joel. Job. I mean, Joel. In the book of Joel, Joel, chapter 1. There's only way we're going to survive this. We must look unto Yah Yisrael. He says in Joel, I want to show you this day. The day of the most horrific nuclear explosion. When all of the 11,000 nuclear bombs were Russia. It doesn't even put a dent in this nuclear fusion. This offering that shall be burnt. That shall be burnt. Just like the ashes that Yah, he is going to sweep up not one molecule of an ash. It's going to be lost from Yisrael. Yosef said, boys, when you leave this land, you take every fiber of my bones, let it rot in the grave, take it all up. Not one bone, not one hair. When they were thrown in the midst of the fiery furnace, not their clothes were singed, not one drop of hair. He has numbered even that. To say, that number... Where is it? There it is. And make sure that it finds its proper place. And that's a fact. You don't have to buy it. It's still the truth. It says in the book of Job. Joel. Joel. Chapter 1 verse 14. He commands us to set apart a sum. A denying of our flesh. Listen Yisrael. Let us begin and learn how to deny the greed and the lust of our flesh. Not only in food, but in our own lusts and our, and our own activities. Uh, that we have time for every damn thing but Yah. Yeah. Time for y'all mart uh, and we market, uh, but don't have time uh, to uh, lahak, to study, to show Yah that you are proved unto him. Uh, and that he rightly devoured the Torah in your heart. Have yeah. hey, we got time for gossip? And every kind of damn wicked thing is wrong. It's wrong. It's wicked. It is the truth, my friend. So he commands us to set apart. Kadosh, a fast. He said, and you must call a migra, a solemn assembly, chodash. It must be set apart. You must set your mind apart because the devastation of the time, the akharith, the last of the latter time, it is upon us. He said, first of all, you gather the Zachim, 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 all the elders. Hell, you got elders that they are so foolish and immature, and they have not matured to the level. They're not elders. In the store the other day, Simeon and I, we had to go out. I want to move quickly. And there was this old man, he was 80 years old, and I, of course, you know, I'm very the creatures at time. I said to him, I said, Time, man. I said, time. he had, he, he, he sells uh, commercial appliances. I was looking for some stainless steel product. And I said to him, I said, time, man. I looked at that store. I said, I don't even, I see how you can find nothing here. It's just the truth. It was not cluttered. It's beyond cluttered. And of course, I know how to talk to people. I said, I said, time, man. I said to time, man. You know where everything is in this place. He said, for sure I do. I put it there. And I'm like, man, if you can find that screw back there, I know you're tough. I said, Tommy, you know where. I said, Tommy, I know you know where everything in this place. And he was walking for 80 years old. He was stolen. He trying to make some money. And I said, he said, come on with me. I said, oh, I'm coming. 
I said, I know you know where everything is. He said, for sure I do. I put everything there. I said, Tom, how old are you? He says, I'm 80 years old. I said, get out of here. I said, what? come on, talk to me, man. What have kept you like this? He said, man, he said, first of all, hard work. And the man was not moving like no snail. He was moving like a, he moved better than a young man. He said, he said this to me. He says, and one thing that I've learned, he said, you got to always have, he used the word, quote, good thoughts. He said, you, and I mean good thoughts, not out there acting like a damn jack. I said, what? I want to make sure I heard you right, time. He said, yes, it's not acting like a damn jack. <laughs> Look at this old man. I said, okay. Hmm? All right. He says, not that. Settle yourself. You should thoughts be right based upon some principles. I said, okay, what that So, you know, talk to me like that. I know I can work him a little bit. So, how much you want for that? I want that. I said, whoo, that's a lot of money for that. I said, what, what are you talking about now? <clears throat> we talking about cash money. What, what are you talking about now? You can't tell me nothing but no. He was, that is the cash price. But now, when he told me, he said, that's the cash price, but, you know, I got you now. So he says to me, I said, how much you want for that? He said, I want $750. I said, okay. I said, it's all right. Tommy doesn't know I can buy the thing brand new shipped here for $650. I don't buy nothing unless I check the prices on everything. See, Tommy doesn't know I can get the thing brand spanking new. Brand spanking new. Brand spanking new. For $650. He said, I want $750. He said, I tell you what. On them right there, I give you a deal. I said, well, talk to me then. He said, any one of those? I said, you're 4 and 50. I said, I hear you, Tommy. I said, that's not that. I hear you. So I'm just looking. Of course, I'm not going to buy anything because I know I can beat his prices all day long. I know I, know I can beat his prices. I don't buy nothing until I search out the prices to the fullest. I buy nothing. I don't care if it's $10, $20. Must be frugal with him. I said, all right, Tommy. I said, well, Tom, I said, well, now what have you done to keep it? He said, man, he said, I'll tell you what. He said, my breakfast every morning, I eat salmon and grits. That's all I eat. Okay, salmon and grits. Every day. He said, in the evening, I eat fruits and vegetables. He said, but every single morning, he said, I eat salmon and grits. That's it. And I work hard. And I said, oh, Tom, I don't even know if I even see your days like that, man. This old man. He had more energy than a 25-year-old boy. They're not men. They're 25 and 30-year-old boys. They're mama boys. Still sucking milk. No, milk is not tough for the body. Y'all that bull out there that's trying to ride mama. That, no, nah, he doesn't want mama's milk anymore. He wants to put a baby in her. It's not. Even when animals know that there's a time to cease from it, we ought to know. Yeah. How about that? Can I close with this? I want to listen to this in the book of Eo. He said, set aside, set aside your fast for a migra kodesh. He said, I want you to gather the, the elders. Elderly men should be wise with wisdom. They should have this propensity when they speak that everyone listens. He said, you gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into Bayat or into the house of Yah, Bayat Yah. And then he uses this specific year. He says, I want you to za'ach, I want you to cry with an energy, with a purpose. I want them to cry to za'ach, listen. He did not say kara, to cry aloud. He says za'ach. He said, I want them to cry for one thing, for the ara, for the special help of Yah. You worry about a damn dollar check and the damn dollar mart. He said, you gather them. See, our mind's in his bed today, but we, our mind's on everything. He said, I want them to za'ach, to za'ach, to cry for the special help. We're going to need it. Yeah. Yeah. Za'ach. To cry for this help to cry to Omar Yan. And he signifies a lie. My for the yam, ha, the day, again, he says the day of Yah, it is at hand. It is at hand. 
He gives us a form of the descriptive of that day. He says it is a day of destruction, of shud, of great havoc, of great devastation, of great ruins beyond the concept of man. It is a day of great robbery and oppression and death. This is the first superlative he used. Should to give us wisdom of this day. He says, for the day of Yah is at hand as a should from the most powerful one shall it enter in. It's coming from Yah. That's what Hashatan would cause fire. We will get into the depth of that fire, all right? He shall cause it to deceive and to draw and to bring about this delusion upon man, but it is all in the hand of Yah. He has orchestrated this to prepare us for the day, for one of the greatest of holocausts that man could ever imagine, uh, for the whole offering. And the only thing that is going to sustain us is a law for Torah, a law for Yah, his Torah, Yahshua. And then there's a great love, and love protects. Yeah. You mamas, you love your babies, you protect them. And don't tell me this man right here wasn't protective, man, because he, not only was he protective in his way, but he, I wouldn't have messed with him, man. He was packing his stuff that everybody knew. Don't mess around here. Might as well do like this here. Huh? Uh-uh, you're not coming up on this. And that's the way Yah is. You think his passion was like that? You wait till Yah. He said, devil, your kingdom is coming down. You've been building your kingdom. I've allowed you all over this land. But it's coming down to hell. It sure is. That's why we must za'ach. We must cry for the special help. The ara, the help of sakhor, the special help from Yah. Not this damn job, job prayer we have. I will, man. We must za'ach for the special help. For that day is coming. It is a day of great shul. It is not from Hashatan. It is not from the nuclear attack. It is not from the bombs. He is not going to allow this wicked world to destroy the excellence of his beauty. That's why this shul demon of hell, this demon of darkness, the devils, that's why they're building their massive destruction. You know those saints, if I go down, everybody's going down with me. They would say that in my day. Huh? Did you say yes, old man? All right, talk to me. If I go down, baby, everybody's going down. The whole house is going down. And that's where this beast, the way he is. We were beastly like that. So if I go down, you going down with me. I ain't going down by myself. I'm taking the whole thing down. Is that a, is there, isn't there a proverb that says you fight fire with what? Fire. Your says the fire of hell, I'm going to fight it with my fire. You build your nuclear bombs all over this land, America. You coming down to the gates of hell. You have terrified and robbed every nation. You have stole of their daughters and their sons. You have robbed the nations of the earth. You greedy bastards, you greedy dolls. I'm going to kill you. And I'm going to kill you, baby. Sure he is. I don't give a damn if you don't like it. Go find your pacifier, find T.D. Jakes, many hen. Hallelujah. Listen to this. This is coming from the Most High. Verse 16. It talks about the Urchel, doesn't it? It says, uh, it's not the Urchel or the meat. We think that's some cow meat, don't we? He says, is it not your supply? Everything we get, the average table in America, the food has traveled 3,200 miles. The average table when you sit down, I don't give a damn what your life eating is. Royce, vegan, vegetarian, meatarian, 
Your food has traveled some 3,000 miles. That's a fact. You eat that strawberry, where do you think it's coming from? Cali? Way down in South America. That comes to the ports of Florida, goes to California, and then to some Midwestern city, and then you get it. That's why Yah wanted us to live among each other that we can replenish the storehouse. Yeah. Hallelujah. He says this, Is not your ochel, your meat supply, he uses the word karat. You've heard me use that karat. Is it not cut off? Is it not destroyed? Is it not diminished? How are you going to survive? You going for your fat back chitlins and your barbecue pork rolls? I will, my friend. You want your leg of lamb? He says, is not your ochel, your meat offering? Is it not your meat cut off before your eye and your eyes? He says, yes, even the shincha, the joy, the mirth of joy, and the gila of gladness. Uh, he said, from the house of Yah. See, that's what we must call. Uh, we must gather together, Yisrael. And we must not only karab and za'ach, we must cry for the help of Yah. Yeah. You must pray for Yisrael, for the true house, uh, for Yerushalayim, the city of Shalom. Yeah. We must... I've been planting seeds. I would get up early in the morning. I got seeds to plant. I got more tomatoes than I got. I got my Brussels sprout because I know I, I'm doing that for, make sure you got some Brussels sprout. So Brussels sprouts, I got seeds. And then we had a little mouse in the greenhouse. And they love to dig the seeds and just eat. Man, thousands of plants over there and this fool eating everything. You got to get him. But look what Yas says. We planted garden, castle garden, and all these wonderful seeds. Won't be long you'll see those heads begin to flourish. Already the peas and all oh, the beautiful sweet peas are coming up. Go out there and just, I love them raw. They taste sweet like peanuts to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, it's not the meat of, and then verse 7, he says, the zira, the seed, it is abash, it rottens. It is dried up, there's no life. How are you going to eat? What are you going to eat? You think you're Kesef? Your silver and gold are going to buy? You're telling people to buy silver and gold? You are a child of hell. You tell a poor mother to buy that a man that can't even take care of his babies. That he's struggling and striving, living in a shack. Don't even have the nutritional uh, substance uh, to put in his soil for his sweet potatoes uh, or his corn to grow up. And you tell him to buy gold and silver, you are a dirty bastard. I tell the man to buy truth uh, and sell it not the wisdom of Yah, the understanding. You tell him to buy gold, uh, you are a beast of hell. Uh, you are a child of the beast, uh, and Yah shall render unto you your just wicked reward. Uh, I tell you to buy your shoe. Uh, I tell you to buy the bread and let him of life, uh, buy the truth of Torah, and damn their gods uh, and their lords and their Jesus, uh, and eat truth. It is right, man. He says, the seeds shall dry up and rotten under their clods. Uh, he says, uh, and not only the storehouse uh, or the treasure or the atsa or the garner, uh, he said, are laid to shomain. It's the places of storage, uh, the places of preserving, uh, they have become shomain. They have become appalling, they're desolate. Uh, when this stuff, the fire began to burn, you think you go into your grocery store and buy you some chocolate milk or some hot grits. You are wrong, my friend. You're wrong. You think your gold and your silver is going to buy you food. You're wrong. He says your meat, your hell, your food supply is cut off. I don't give a damn if you're living in Trump Tower. When you began to explode upon the wickedness, uh, began in where first uh, at the house of Yisraya, that's what the Mishpatim of Yah begins, uh, because of our own damn wickedness. Uh. We don't call sin, sin, uh, and that which is right, right. Uh, we cover the wickedness of this world. Uh. You cover it. Go on to you. Keep on. You can't have them. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, you, you atsa, they are laid desolate, Shamim. He said, your barns are broken down. For the corn, it 
Yabish is withered. It dries up not to be used, but it is withered. It has no life on it. Then he says this. I was talking to Oxymion. I said, man, don't put no more hay out. He says, preacher man, lay up. He said, they're not going to eat that. I said, man, put the let out of me. Eat it. He said, they're not. He said, you're going to hear the cows groaning, and you hear those cows. You hear them groaning right there? Mmm. 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 And then when they don't get nothing at time, they will say, I tell you what, that can't hold me. They'll jump the fence. They'll walk it down. That big bull out there, he weighs 2,000 pounds. He's bad to the bone. He's a real boy. He's a man. He ain't lifting no steroids. There ain't nothing but hay and grass out there on him. There ain't no chemicals in him. He said, I'm a man. Give me some hay, man. And if you don't, I'm going to chop down this. They'll walk and they'll tear that down. That doesn't keep a cow. You want to come through that, they'll come through it. He'll walk it down. They say, give me what I want. And they become perplexed. He says, listen, listen what he says. He says, that, he says here that, uh, he says here in, in uh, Eob, uh, what 18, uh, he says, how does the Tanim, the beast, mourn? They groan. And the herds of cattle, they are book. They are so perplexed, Yisra'iyah. They have no understanding is what is taking place. They are perplexed. They are confused. Why? Because there is no pasture. There's nowhere for them to graze. When the fire has consumed them, where are they going to graze? What? As I said to us, if we understand what even happened in Chernobyl and Pripyat, the fields today are nothing but death. What do you do? Feed your babies death? We're doing it anyway. So when the five year comes, the nuclear bombs, they have no, no sense, uh, they have no powerful impact on that. He said, because there is no pasture, that is what a re'ach does. He leads the people to the pasture to eat. He says, yes, even the flock of the soon, the sheep, are made ashamed. They're made desolate. We are the ones that have our shame. We have trespassed. We have transgressed against Yah. We have committed sin. And we do it without any dignity. We do it blatantly before Yah. Listen to us. The Nobi cries, O oh, Yah, to you will I, Za'ach, I will kara. For the fire, the ish, the great fire, the thermal nuclear power, not of Russia. This is coming from the mouth of Yah. It's coming from his mouth. His judgment is a fire. He said, the fire has devoured the pastors of the wilderness. And the flame has burned all, not some, all the Ezrim or the Ezrek, all the trees uh, of the field. The beasts of the field cry also to Yah. Does it say that, Yisrael? That even the wicked shall cry, the turning, the beasts cry also to Yah for the rivers, for the rivers of water. They are Yabish, they are dried. And the fire has devoured the pastures in the wilderness. It shall come to its consummation. There's a fire that is going to sarath. It is going to purge us, Yisra'ya. And it's coming from the Most High. I want to give us one word of consolation. I'm going to close from here, all right? I'm tired. And let me read three places in Torah, okay? And I'm going to close in the book of 1st Kephah, 1st Peter. This is our consolation, our strength. I want to give us this. We're going to continue on that Shabbat Yas. We all in the same direction. But hear this in 1st Kephah, 1st Peter, chapter 4, verse 12. He tells us to be loved. Think. Now look, he uses the word think. Zachah. Don't let that become a memory. He says, think not. It's strange Concerning the law of the fiery trials, uh, the massa, the fiery trials, uh, this test of despair and desperation, the massa, the fiery trials, uh, which is to Sarah to try you uh, as though some strange thing has happened to you. Uh, don't think that is strange, Israel. Why? He says, but rejoice. 
Rejoice, Israel. Let the fire come. The nuclear fire will do us no damage. We're going to eat and we're going to have the food of Yah. Yoshua says, I have food that you know not of. They said, where did he get? Someone went and bought him some food. Come on now. He tells us to rejoice in so much why you are partakers of Yoshua Hamashiach's suffering. That when his tefireth shall be revealed, you also may have Gilead, you may be glad also with exceedingly joy. Hallelujah. 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 How could Kepha speak that? Because uh, he knew what Zechariah had said, uh, and he knew what Ezra, the prophet, the Nobi had said. And I want to read from those two books, and I'm going to sit down, all right? It says in the book of 3rd Ezra, just hear this, the book of 3rd Ezra. Ezra says, uh, in the midst of this great fire of trial, look what shall be revealed. Hear me. Ezra, 3rd Ezra, chapter 16, verse 73. Then shall they be yada, they be known, uh, who are my chosen. Then shall it be in that day, uh, who are the born here and the elect. For the fire shall not consume them, nor come nigh unto them. Uh, he said, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. You're going to know because we're going to come out. The holocaust, the burnt offering, the whole offering. Uh, it is our Imuna. It's going to be trod. That is the whole of Yah. The just shall live by Imuna. When he speaks, it is Imuna. It is faith because he knows who he is. Uh, we need to understand whom he is uh, and walk in the same Imuna as he has given us all that measure. The Nobi Zacharias says, I want to close here. It says in Zechariah 39, Yah says, Be of good cheer, Yisrael, rejoice. He says, And I will. He said, And I will. As I've said often, we know when he used the word will, it is hafiz, it is his pleasure, his desire, his passion. He said, And I will. I will. I will. I will bring the third part through the ish the fire. Don't worry about it. I'm guiding you. Just uh, get in line, boy. I will. I will. Uh, I know you're there, uh, no, be my uh, prophet. Come on, just get in line. I will bring a third part through the fire. For what? He says, so I can saraf. I will refine you. I will test you. I will prove you. You, is, you, are, you are part of the whole of the burnt offering uh, unto Almighty Yah. You're going to be tried by fire. He said, I will bring a third to the fire. He says, and I will refine them. I will saraf them uh, as silver is refined. Uh, and I will try them as gold is tried. Uh, he said, when I do that, they shall karaf. They shall call on uh, my shame, my name. He says, I shall shimaka as I can talk us that he will hear from the heavens. And he said, And I will hear them too. I will hear them. And this is the part I like this all, but I, he says, And I will say, It is my, uh, my people, my nation, it is my people. And they shall say, Yah is my Abba. That's what they're going to say. It is my people. And we shall say, that is my Abba. Father knows best. I'm going to stop right there. Hallelujah. May the riches of Yah rest upon you. All Yisrael, may he strengthen his nation, his beards. We need that in this hour of all things. I will never stop saying, you want to understand what love is. I have messages on love. And you'll find out you don't have much. You have this pseudo-official thing that mom and dad have taught you. Based upon lies and untruth. Here it is, love. 
The man says he loves God and keep not his mitzvah, you keep in Sunday, you're a damn liar. Yeah. That we keep his, we shema, we guard his mitzvah, the commandments of Yah. That's love. And to say you love and you have love and you don't do it, you're a damn liar. May the riches of God rest upon you all. He strengthen you all, Yisrael. We do need your help. I'm not a beggar, but send an offering to help. We need that to sustain you that are watching us on the visual live stream. Uh, that situation, we're able to utilize that service, what they call a window shed, watershed, and reproduce that so it would not cost as much. Because there were times in the beginning, at $400 a month, that was nothing, five, six hundred. Because when you come on the line like that, so those things, that is changing. Uh, Daryl, I know you hear me down there. I need you to get up here, all right, down there in Atlanta, so we can, uh, uh, he can help to reshape our system. He's an IT professional, um, 28 years in the military, an officer uh, in the Navy, had the... Uh, now, yeah, I can tell this man is not talking with some hope watch. I can tell in his speech, his language. He's a very bright young man. He's only, I think, 47, 48 years old, 48 years old. <clears throat> he was an officer, retired as a lieutenant out of the Navy. And he's a young man. He's a man of a great sense of understanding of things. He, he even told me, he said, I looked at your website and all your system. He said, I can help you. I can help you with all of that. Well, get on up here, Ak, all right? That ain't nothing but a four-hour ride, okay? Get on up here. We got a place for you, warm. You'll be right here by Ach Simeon. And either you talk him to death or he'll talk you to death. I will be out working, all right? You have time. I got work to do. I got to get up early in the morning. I got work to do, all right? So you come on my Ach Simeon. I told Ach Simeon that uh, I put him right there by you. And you're going to talk all night. I'm not talking all night. I'm going to bed. And rest. So I can get up. Listen, don't forget to... Spring your clocks up for what well, not you in Cali. Now, you all don't do that. In Indiana, there are states that do not spring up and back. It's so silly. They're trying to change times, you know. So don't forget, well, I won't spring mine. I keep it the same. Well, that's kind of silly. Just spring. Time is still time, man. Someone tell you to be that eight and you got seven. Oh, I'm late. That, that's so silly. It's just stupid. I don't spring mine up. Oh, you silly, man. Stop that woman. So immature. Spring the thing up. That's the anti-devil. That's anti-Christ. Damn the anti-Christ. Everything has got something to do with it. Oh, this, this is the new world order. Oh, you silly man. It, it's, it's from the, from the day that, uh, that, that, uh, uh, that Cain came forth that you had a new world order. Nimrod says, I'm coming up. There's nothing you can do. Y'all say, no, boy, I don't need to throw that down with you. It, 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 they'll talk about it in history, but it will never reach me. And the base of that building was so big, it take you two days to walk around that bad boy. That's a big building there, isn't it? That's, that's a mad boy. Not like this trash that the two planes, they say, Poo. Nah, that didn't come. That had to come down by the hand of you. I said, Billy. So there's always been a new world order. The whole world is under the order of darkness. So you think, what, you, what, what do you think? They think that communism is any different than totalitarianism. Well, totalitarianism is indifferent than, than, uh, than capitalism. It's all about one thing. The rich and the powerful here and the masses of the poor here. To rob, to steal, to kill, to take. It's always been that. So what, what, it's always been a new world order. Damn the club of Rome, the Illuminati. Damn the Masons. The Masons are nothing but a bunch of little boys uh, with some sticks and some aprons uh, and a nutty handshake. And they walk around just nothing but adulterous Men of Hortum, and the Eastern Stars are just a proponent whereby they can just go do the hoeing, all right? Now talk to me. So who gives a damn about the Masons? I'm not afraid of them. They shake hands on the third knuckle. Just they hit each other like that. How about that? It can't be that secretive. You know so much about it. You spend all your time worrying about the Masons and learning about them. I wouldn't spend an ounce. I would not spend. I would not spend one ounce looking up the Shriners or the Masons or the Club. I would not spend my time in such frivolous stupidity. It's stupid. New World Order. It's no New World Order. It's always been a World Order, and it's ordered by Yah. Oh, this is not ordered by the devil. It's ordered by Yah. He's the controller. Nobody else. May Yabrak you all. We bless you all that have joined us. Come on, my Zachina Ramia. 
May the riches of your rest upon you all in Yeshua's mighty name. Bless you, our uh, Ach Tayon, yeah, and our precious Ark there. Charles Davis, we bless you on all you Ark there with him. Be faithful and strengthen our Ark's hand. All right, all right, yeah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm excited today, Israel. Happy for what Yahweh has done, what Yahweh has given us on his table today. Hallelujah. Let us stand strong with reassurance, Israel, because it's Yahweh that keeps us. It's not ourselves, it's not by our own power, by our own might, but it's by the hand of Almighty Yahweh. We're in his hand, Israel. Hallelujah. If we're in the hands of Almighty Yahweh, no man could pluck us out. Hallelujah. So let us stand to our feet, Israel. Let us barak Yahweh for what he has done, for what he is doing. Hallelujah. For his continual mercy and his ahava towards Israel. Hallelujah. Almighty Yahweh, we barak you for this beautiful Shabbaton, the Shabbat you have given us, Abba Yahweh. You have given us rest. And you have also, Abba Yahweh, given us confidence, Yah, to stand on the rock, Yahshua Hamashiach, your Torah. We do ask those that are listening, Yahweh, by via of live stream, and Israel, Yah, that are scattered abroad, Yahweh, that may not have heard this message, Abba Yahweh, you will reassure the hearts of your people, Yah, and keep us, Yahweh. We do ask, Yahweh, those that have come near and far, you will take them to the appointed place at the appointed time, and that your mail comes, Yah, we count around by Israel, Yah. And all things we do, Barak, we give you total, Abba Yahweh, with the breath you have given us, Abba Yahweh, it's not our own, we give it. Back unto you, Abba Yahweh, in all things we give you Toda, in the precious and mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do declare, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.